we've been covering a kind of a theme for the last several weeks anyway. And you needn't worry if you're not familiar with the theme, I will bring you up to speed before we take the next leg in this journey together. Principle to all that we study is one idea that we phrase as following, as goes my attention, so comes my experience. As goes my attention, so comes my experience. It is immutable. It is an interior law. What I give myself to, I get. If I give myself to something low, I get low. If I give myself to something beautiful, I get beauty. If I give myself to the divine as I understand it, I get the divine. That's been one of the themes. The other theme has been a gradual but steady look at this idea of what is it that I really want from life? Not what do I want when I get up and I see the news and I get all stirred up about this or I look at the finances and I get all worried about that or I get pumped because things are popping or whatever it be. Not, not what do I want because something has stimulated me. But what do I want when I see that all has stimulated me, has left me with nothing? Because that's a significant difference. What is it that I want A big part of a person's work for probably many years is just the gradual realization of how, like the prodigal son, they wandered off, they've squandered their resources, meaning their time and their attention, which is all that you really have of your own. And then it, it starts to get a lot simpler. We outlined in words, three real wishes. The first was, I wish I could be at peace with myself. Not at peace because I'm eating something. Not at peace because someone said I look good. Forget that. <laughs> Not at peace because I got a check. but at peace because of the second of the wishes. I wish that I was content that what I have is what I need to be content. My peace is because I am content knowing that what I have is what I need to be content. How will a man or a woman ever be content, ever, when all they live from moment to moment is what they think they have to have to complete themselves? And the third of these wishes, I wish to be at peace with myself, to be content knowing that what I have is all that I need to be content. That doesn't mean, incidentally, that you don't render unto Caesar what is Caesar's. You're in the world, you do the things you do. But the contentment and the peace that I'm describing have nothing to do with anything the world can provide other than the world can gradually show you that all that you've acquired that you thought would bring peace and contentment haven't. And the third of those wishes, which is in one respect, is the completion of the first two, but the three of them are actually a trinity. The third of the wishes is that I wish I had a living relationship with unconditional love. Most of us don't have much of a feeling, let alone an understanding of what that means. So I'll just say, touch on it. I wish that I was compassionate before my tendency to be cruel came up. I wish that rather than thinking about myself first and foremost in every situation, I was able to consider another human being and what they were going through. I wish that I was able to bear my own impatience rather than to blame you for the pain that I say you've caused me. That's a form of unconditional love because it's based in something that is there 
when the moment unfolds that you are a part of instead of you being apart from that and then blaming everything around you for the way that you feel. <clears throat> and I said that that's a kind of trinity and I'm going to explain that. We said and took it right out of Corinthians 2 that there was the possibility of a man or a woman being able to realize a completely different kind of strength. And can you see, just for the sake of trying to tie this together, can you see it would take an altogether different kind of strength to set down your impatience? Not the strength to try to appear patient, but to set down an anger, set down a fear. It's an unusual kind of strength because it has to do with abnegation. It has to do with the nullification of parts of ourselves, not the fulfillment of ourselves as we imagine, but rather seeing that much of what's wrong with us is because we've imagined ourselves to be something that we're not. And that this new kind of strength, which is part of what we're going to look at today, can't be separated from the weakness that we don't know presently we live from, and if you're not clear, I'll, straight, I'll spell it out. All negative states, the enactment and the identification with them are the direct expression of weakness. Think about it. The best I know to do in a moment is to blame you. That's the best I have. To look at you and and, and feel angry at you. That, to feel anger, that's the best I have. F to be afraid of my future, that's the best I can do when something brings up a stimulus that suddenly sends me into a whirlwind. That's the best I have. That's weakness. And of course, we study here, weakness always has a way to justify itself. It defends itself endlessly. No, another kind of strength. And it's connected to the three wishes and the path to it. Take a nice deep breath because I, I want it to fall on the right part of you. And I don't want you to think that you know what I'm talking about. The real strength that a human being can live from, they must find. And the strength that they must find to be able to fulfill the trinity of those three wishes is purity of heart. How far have we come from that idea? It doesn't even enter into our minds anymore. A pure heart. What is a pure heart? It is a heart that is undivided.